hi so in this video i'm going to talk about the different areas of uh, risk modeling now risk modeling is a very important part of uh, quantitative finance quant finance can be used in many areas uh, in decision making for trading uh, and, and lending but also for risk management purpose and risk management is part of both you know trading as well as uh, for uh, for lending business right and um, you know it's very very important for the for the trading firm or the bank to have proper risk management uh, in place otherwise it could incur loss right so the goal of risk management is not to you know generate more profit but to reduce the losses right uh, although indirectly you know that adds to the you know profit uh, of the of the organization right the various areas of risk modeling uh, right the various areas of risk management uh, and 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 there are different types of models you know built for different areas i'm going to discuss more about that if you're looking for career in risk modeling uh, right you need to know actually what are the different options available and where you need to you know try uh, building your career and what really interests you more right so what is risk modeling actually right start with a bit of a definition right it's about use of mathematical models um to manage uh, risk right different types of risk and we'll talk about many types of risk right risk uh, normally people think it's just about you know the risk of uh, it is just credit risk or market risk but there are different other types of risk also uh, right and it's related to both trading as well as lending right to most important a uh, piece of businesses uh, that most banks and insurance companies and trading firms they do in fact you know banks do both but trading firms are only into trading right um and risk management teams um you have are there in all kinds of businesses in the field of finance and modeling in nowadays uh, more uh, used for risk management purpose in earlier days I, you know a couple of decades back there was hardly any modeling happening in risk management area although in other areas of finance it was happening but less uh, on the risk management front but things have changed dramatically after the you know the regulations uh, the new regulations uh, have you know come to uh, light for example you know the regulations on the banks you know the basel rules um, have now uh, sort of been so um, um strict that you know banks have no choice but to invest in in modeling and and data and so on right so uh, there are also similar uh, regulations for insurance company they are also heavily investing in data and modeling and most of the quants uh, who work in these sort of companies banks and insurance comp they work in the risk management area in the risk area different areas of risk area right so if you want to work as a quant in in these companies right most likely you will be working in the risk modeling area of course there are other areas for example in the case of you know insurance you have pricing model development which is less related to risk management something that you um you you work directly for the business and that can be one quant profile for banks also you know right there are quants who work directly on the uh building of models for you know trading purpose for long term investment purpose um and some models are also used for both right uh, for example a credit model can be used for uh, both decision making uh, purpose but also for risk uh, management uh, you know capital and and provision related purpose as well so you know there can be you know a mix of both a bit of both also right um you could also be working in fintechs they have the risk management teams uh, doing modeling work uh, you could also work as uh, as a consultant for different uh, consulting firms big four consulting firms you could also work Uh, with private funds uh, as uh, as a risk modeler right uh, and there are various areas of risk modeling for example credit risk modeling market risk modeling asset liability lm risk modeling which consists of interest rate risk and liquidity risk modeling but you could also work uh, in areas such as you know uh, climate risk modeling and and operational risk modeling and so on and so forth we'll discuss actually you know what you do in these areas and you know um, the different career options in different areas right so we start with the credit risk side credit risk modeling is perhaps you know the most famous sort of modeling um it, uh, also there are a lot of is famous because uh, a lot of jobs are available in this area okay uh, the requ- job Uh, the uh, the vacancies are more actually in credit risk modeling compared to that in other risk modeling for a variety of reasons the biggest reason is because it's related to lending and lending is the biggest business for banks right and uh, the biggest lending risk is the default risk right so credit risk therefore is so popular so what is credit risk uh, is is about you know the risk of default 
um, in a business, right? You you lend money to a customer. The customer is likely to default on the loan, and and uh, you know how do you model for that? How do you model for uh, uh, you know chances of uh, you know default and and what loss you will make if somebody defaults, if the client defaults, right? So. And default risk is always there in the business of banking, right? Um, it's the cost of doing business, right? It's, it's impossible not to have defaults. But uh, the idea behind building models for credit risk uh, management is that, you know, you know how much risk you are taking, right? It should not be more than what you can take, right? So, uh, so that's, you know, primarily about uh, credit risk management and you build models for that you build different models to us you know to forecast to sort of predict chances of uh, default of a given customer but if that customer defaults how much loss that you will make right if you can predict uh, to uh, you know great accuracy these two events or these two things then you will be um, You'll be knowing well in advance uh, that okay, how much risk you run in in your given portfolio, and then accordingly you will have, you know, the the risk management principle in place, the mitigations in place. For example, in terms of having enough capital and so on and so forth, right? And uh, but it's not that simple, right? It sounds very simple. It it's is a lot more difficult than that actually, right? Collecting data, building models, getting regulatory approval. Uh, defining the uses of different models and you know the you know different uh, shortcomings of the models and how you mitigate that it's it's a very long process right most banks have got credit risk model development um, big banks have e and a lot of money invested in credit risk model development even the smaller banks are heavily investing nowadays in uh, developing models for credit risk right um, primarily you will have you know modeling either for retail clients or for wholesale clients the modeling techniques could be very very different uh, in many ways actually well in the, the statistical techniques would remain the same but the way you build model the, you the approach and 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 you know segmentations um and you know um for example uh, how you use these models also could be different for retail versus wholesale in wholesale you could uh, supplement uh, model based decision with also human decisions whereas in retail it could be more automated automated through model um so all these things will be uh, you know important while building models right um you know, it is primarily for rating assignment, right? You assign a credit rating to customer and based on that you charge uh, interest rate. So that's like risk-based pricing. But you could also use that for uh, regulatory related purposes as, you know, how much capital you should keep. So all that is part of credit risk model development. It's uh, interesting career options for those who are interested in the field of finance, but also interested in mathematics and coding. Um, you know, most... Uh, uh, quants as i've said many times in the videos uh, most quants work in the risk modeling area and in the risk modeling area most quant work in the credit risk modeling area so this is you know therefore such a place uh, where you know there's sim simply so many vacancies uh, then the second one is the the market risk uh, modeling area right this is one area which is primarily related to the trading business uh, and and modeling for that uh, is is what uh, market risk modeling is all about it's, it's about assessing you know how much loss that will uh, in potential loss because of the trading activities in different asset classes not just you know the stocks but it could be also on bonds and commodities and and other other uh, asset classes um so you you predict the potential loss in different conditions including you know the adverse conditions uh, or the stress conditions um, and it's used for a variety of purpose again for capital regulatory related capital allocation but also for internal portfolio management uh, by the way this is uh, one area uh, of risk management where which is uh, one area of risk management which is used both by the banks and uh, even uh, the private trading firms okay uh, because private trading firms, they don't use credit risk model. They don't do lending activities. So they don't build credit models. Although for some of their trading activities, they need to understand the credit uh, model. At least at high level, they need to understand. But uh, they don't build models directly. Um, whereas, uh, I mean, for some trading product, they may need to know credit rating, actually. 
uh, but f- f- banks actually are involved in both so trading as well as uh, lending so therefore uh, you know so this is one common area for both okay um unlike in credit is uh, management where you know you try to predict something at least for one year period uh, in the case of market risk right it is is much shorter actually it could be a day or um as a week or or a month uh, right so you want to know what is the potential loss for next day or for next week or for next month right so duration is it's smaller the uh, for which you want to do the estimation um the techniques could be very very different from that in the credit risk model development uh, right uh, people normally use simulation based techniques for market risk model development but there are also statistical techniques such as you know the the variance modeling uh, volatility modeling like arch charts also are used um the data challenges are much less compared to credit risk model development also modeling as such is is somewhat easier in my view some people might differ uh, is compared to that uh, in the case of credit risk model development um uh, the sufficient amount of trading data is available so modeling is is less of uh, a challenge there um all right so this is second area there's one other area which is you know the operational risk area um it's uh, somewhat new people were not bothered about operational risk challenges all the operational risk events used to happen you know ever since banks uh, have been there banks uh, face these things every single year like lot of issues. so what are uh, these events right these are events you know the basically the errors or mistakes made by different processes by people or the it system right so it's unintended right the or maybe sometimes intended but mostly unintended errors uh because of people or processes or systems and these are not uh these are rare actually right you don't see them happening um, on a consistent basis um but they when they happen you lo- you make a lot of losses right uh therefore it's it's known as the rare modeling rare events actually because these events do not happen every day to the bank unlike uh, trading losses that can happen uh you know m- every day right um now operational risk is associated with both lending as well as trading business uh but sometimes you know the issues can also be independent of the main business of the banking in- entity uh it could be completely unrelated to any pro- you know the main business right for instance um the employee uh, did something right wrong right uh, it did something wrong with the internal data it sold it to some third party right it has nothing to do with the risk of lending or risk of trading right it is it's totally different but it does bring a lot of concern for the bank so there can be legal and compliance issue now earlier there were no models actually built for this sort of issue it just there were some qualitative metrics used for uh, monitoring purposes but now regulators want uh, banks to build models for even for that modeling is quite big challenge for this because the data issue you don't uh, encounter such issues very often and the issues can be very different also so in order to build model you need to have the, s- the same issue happening you know uh multiple times so that you have some data points right um, and so that's a challenge um core statistic is used extreme value theory is used core statistic is used for modeling but nowadays people are also use uh, trying machine learning uh modeling techniques the anomaly detection techniques um primarily the you know the boosting bagging sort of models random forest svm type models being tried uh but also you know core statistical models uh, are tried in this area then you have the interest rate risk which is part of the alm risk actually you know this is uh, about uh, assessing the impact of change in the interest rates okay on different assets and it could all also have an impact not just on asset but also on liability right you, you know there's some pro- banking products which are uh, very sensitive to interest for example the bonds or, or the mortgage uh even the derivative products uh, many of them are very sensitive to uh, change in the interest rate right and that could put the bank in real trouble if you know if you know the risk is not properly managed um right um yeah so it can bring lot of trouble to the bank if 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 don't really understand uh 
uh, how much impact your bank the bank will have because of any potential change in the interest rate it could be increase or the decrease by the way right both can bring risk um right so you have the funding risk but for example the interest payment risk right um uh, even it can bring challenges related to uh for example uh, refinancing and so on right um uh, also so uh, modeling that is very important uh, there are many very academic models used for uh, interest rate model development uh, you don't use this you know regression type models that you use in credit risk modeling in interest rate modeling um although you know these models can indeed be used in some areas but there are uh, more mathematical models uh, simulation based models uh, academic in in academic finance which are you know used in in banking also um but so therefore it's very interesting it's quite different actually if i've done credit risk modeling for some time i think it's uh, imp important to also know other areas of risk modeling and this is one thing to try um okay so that's uh, interest rate risk modeling and you have also really liquidity risk modeling this also part of lm risk modeling asset liability management uh, risk modeling so it's about you know modeling for inflows and outflows cash flows uh, again you use statistical models for this right you want to predict how much money the bank will get how much money the bank will have to give to the depositors and so on right if there is a huge mismatch it will create big problem for the bank by the way there can be a bank run right it has happened many times in the history of banking so it is not uh, a rare extremely rare thing to happen it has happened many times so knowing that well in advance is important for the bank to survive so it puts the bank's survival at stake if you know it is not able to manage the liquidity risk properly right um, it affects both banking as well as trading books uh, and it's behavioral modeling the modeling is behavioral in the sense see in the credit risk modeling you may not have behavioral data uh, not always i mean you have behavioral model also behavioral modeling is about you understand actually how customer behavior is changing the same customer's behavior is changing over time so that data is actually available in the case of interest uh, in the case of uh, you know uh, cash inflows and cash outflows that is very interesting to model they use for regulatory purpose as well as for non regulatory purpose uh, for banks internal uh, liquidity management Uh, interesting area actually right uh, many banks uh, put this in in the market risk area actually a lot of banks have alm risk modeling team working alongside the market risk people um, uh, but yeah, yeah lending side also quite heavily impacted of so so yeah it, it's uh, one area where yeah and not nothing much is written actually you won't find much of uh, alm risk modeling uh, on the public domain okay but it's in quite interesting then you have country risk this is is a risk of uh, you know different countries actually defaulting defaulting on their debt but also there are other things for example if i've lent money to you know some customers which are based in certain countries where you have geopolitical risk you have you know foreign exchange risk and so on and so forth um it can be an independent sort of a risk but it can be a risk that can be associated with let's say market risk or credit risk okay so it can be part of credit risk also right a customer defaulting on the loan not because of it its own situation because it's in a country where there is some new regulation and it is not able to comply to that regulation so there is a risk of default right so knowing that in advance is very important country risk is uh, extremely important especially in the case of lending business and uh, this is used as a risk driver in credit risk model development uh it's also used for override purpose uh i mean the way you use the models but it's also used separately right you build models internal models separately just to assess the country risk and whether you know a given bank has huge exposure to a given country or not so it's used for portfolio management and so on then you have climate risk fairly new actually uh, wasn't in an area at least when i started there was no talk about climate risk but climate risk is is perhaps the hot, hottest uh, risk modeling area um it affects both uh, kinds of businesses all kinds of businesses but mostly the the lending business of the of the banks 
uh, it's also quite a big thing in the in in the field of uh, insurance as well not just in banking but also in insurance um, different types of risk uh, climate risk but primarily two types uh, physical risk and transition risk physical risk is actual you know risk involved in floods uh, drought and an earthquake you know these sort of climate uh, events transition risk is about you know the policy change related to climate risk right how that will bring you know changes to the profitability of the different clients so it's the modeling is a big challenge because simply there's no data most banks were simply not collecting data related to climate events so to have a, that distinction in place that uh, if the loss is because of climate event or is because of idiosyncratic event related to the the client is very difficult to segregate historical data is very difficult to segregate but you know banks are now proactively collecting data so maybe in few years time they will be in a position to build good climate risk models um good area actually if you want to work in this area um wonderful area actually um right uh, you use mostly statistical models but you can also use uh, machine learning models in this area the not many banks have been able to build good models yet but this is one area you know banks are hiring quite big in number also consulting firms are also hiring big in numbers um the neighbors model risk actually you know model risk is not itself a risk area but uh, i think bank of england this was the first regulator to recognize this as a risk area in itself so this is about you know risk coming from the model themselves right across different risk areas when you use models there can be chance uh, is you know there can be issues with the model themselves right so um error can happen uh, because the model is is wrong or the data used is wrong or the methodology used is wrong right so there can be many reasons why there can be model risk quantification of that is very important knowing that what could be the model risk in that model is important and you need to know that uh, well in advance before you use the model right and there are dedicated teams in all banks for uh, model risk management model risk management you have in all areas of risk market risk credit risk operational risk and so on and so forth right uh, so this is also one wonderful area uh, for a career um, you don't necessarily build models here but you assess the risk involved in other people other models right you you still use some quantitative techniques by the way right it's not like you don't use anything um, completely new but uh, you certainly use these techniques to assess risk in other models right again it's an evolving area uh, and there are many challenges to this okay so these are some of the things i want to discuss uh, if you want to learn some of this risk modeling areas credit risk modeling or market risk modeling uh, you know you can reach out to me i do have a course on quantitative finance and risk modeling um yeah i have uh, you know created a very beginner friendly quantitative finance and risk modeling certification um if you can reach out to me i i will share the details with you you can find that you know contact details uh, just send me a whatsapp message you can find that descrip- uh, the contact details in the description section of this video if you have questions uh, feel free to reach out to me um, or just uh, you know comment in the video thanks